Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Thank you for joining us this evening. It is Holy Thursday. I am Pastor Jeffrey Zalatoris at Harmony United Methodist Church. I welcome you to celebrate as part of our Holy Week services this time of gathering on the Holy Thursday. Friends, Christ invited the disciples to join him to celebrate the Passover meal, the Seder. The Seder meal is the gathering of remembrance for the Jewish peoples, a time to recall God's mercy in the span of history, a time to recall God's covenant promises and the fulfillment of those promises by God, and a time to renew a faithful life. Central to the story of the Passover meal, then, is the story of Moses and the exodus of the enslaved peoples from ancient Egypt. For us on Holy Thursday, then, we remember that story of the liberation of enslaved peoples from Egypt. We remember Jesus' Last Supper with the disciples. We remember Jesus' instruction for us to serve. And we remember in the dark of night, Jesus going to the garden for prayer. Let us begin with the story of the Passover. Our Old Testament lesson is taken from Exodus 12, verses 1 through 4, and then 11 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month that they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the God for the people. Thanks be to God. By the example of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, you taught us the greatness of true humility and call us to watch with him in his passion. Give us grace to serve one another in all meekness and to enter into the fellowship of his suffering. In his name and for his sake. Amen.
Friends, it is customary to celebrate communion on Holy Thursday in remembrance of the Lord's Supper, that last supper that Jesus shared with the disciples. And it is our sacramental tradition of Holy Eucharist to invite the Holy Spirit into a particular place and a particular moment of time. But this year we are unable to celebrate and share the same bread and the same cup in this place and in this time. Therefore, instead of offering the sacrament of Holy Communion this Holy Thursday, we celebrate a virtual agape feast, a love feast feast to remind us of that Passover meal and of the night when Jesus' words at the Last Supper were shared. After I offer the Lord's Prayer this, this time, I will make two blessings, one blessing for food and for life, and one blessing for water and the cup of salvation. You are invited to eat and drink of any refreshment you have in your own home in remembrance of of the Last Supper. Almighty God, who having abundant mercy has promised the forgiveness of sins to all who, with hearty repentance and true faith, turn to you, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. Bring us to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, hear these words from the first letter of John. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is atoning for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. May this truth be imprinted on your hearts and transform your lives so that God is ever at your center. Amen. Father God, progenitor of the universe, you offered covenant promises to Abraham for your blessings and not for curses. You offered to sustain Moses and show him a path for establishing a new people who would learn to follow your ways and teach new generations. Thank you, O oh God. Jesus Messiah, you taught with authority and honor, showed mercy by your wondrous deeds, and convicted sinful souls of your abundant grace and forgiveness. You invite the many to live as servants, obedient to your goodness. Thank you, O oh God. Holy, Holy Spirit, you came as an advocate and comforter for the world. You convict us of our sins that we choose repentance and your forgiveness. You convict us to live with virtues of servanthood and compassion. Thank you, O oh God. And together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us all. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, sovereign over the universe, you bring forth food from the earth to sustain us. Blessed is your name for all the life and for the food that we receive this night. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, sovereign over the universe. You gave us water for life. You create the fruit of the vine. Blessed is your name for refreshing our lives with water and for the cup of life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. And I invite you in your own homes and at this time to share in this meal.
We continue to worship with these words from John's Gospel. In the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 17, 31 through 35. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he had put on his robe and returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. And Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. These words may sound a little odd in this time when we are strongly discouraged from gathering together in public and more so this entire scene of the Last Supper seems odd this year. A meal in which more than 10 people have gathered together. They've gathered together elbow to elbow, sharing of the same cup, even washing feet. There's no six-foot distance between them. In so many ways, this Last Supper scene goes against our current state of public health orders and guidance. The gospel feels strange to us today. In a time when we feel strange because some of us feel held back from serving as we are called to serve. Yet in the strangeness of our very own time, it is harder to ignore or dismiss this lesson, we can reflect on the story in a new way this year. Because we cannot live as we normally do. 
John's Gospel account of the Last Supper night gets us thinking about Jesus' instructions to the disciples throughout John's teaching. That you love one another. For John's Gospel teaches us that Jesus had been teaching the disciples throughout that evening, from the start of the evening to its end. And after Jesus had washed the disciples' feet, he taught some of the great I Am declarations. I am the way and the truth and the life, Jesus declared. I am the true vine, and you are the branches. Jesus proclaimed his commandment this, that you have love for one another as I have loved you. And he expanded that by teaching. No one has greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Now, very fitting that evening for Jesus to tell his disciples that. Jesus offered assurance to the disciples. He would ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit an advocate who will be with you forever. And Jesus declared to God, As you have sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. By this, Jesus reminded the disciples that their calling was not to sit still, nor to hide, nor to be separate from the world, but just as Jesus had been called to serve the world, they too, the disciples, were being sent into the world. At this Last Supper, Jesus did not have time for the disciples to guess at his intentions or to guess what his instructions were. He made things very clear. He taught by word and by action. He showed the disciples by example that he was not above serving others. He would do the most menial of tasks that a servant might be asked to do. He took a basin of water he took a towel, tied it around himself. He washed one disciple's feet, and then the next, and the next around the table. He washed the feet of James and of John. He washed Simon Peter's feet even after Peter had argued against it. He even washed the feet of Judas Iscariot before Judas would leave for his errand. Jesus washed the feet of each of these disciples. He had no time for parables. He had no time for unclear meanings with these disciples this evening. And so after he completed that menial task of washing the feet, he said to them, If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Jesus made it clear. The acts of servanthood define disciples. Disciples serve. No task is too small. No task is beneath the station of the disciple. But also, no task is too great for a disciple either. For God is with us where God calls us to serve. That the one who washes feet can be a teacher, that a teacher can wash feet of servants. All disciples are expected to serve others. All disciples are expected to treat one another respectfully, to look out for one another, to share in serving others, to love one another. Why then are the disciples sent into the world? Well, Jesus tells them they must follow the new commandment, that they love one another. And just as Jesus had loved them, here again, Jesus did not live away by separating from the people. Jesus lived among the people, walked among the people, healed the people, served. He taught the disciples as he served. He showed them to live as he lived. He had prepared the disciples to share love with one another, love with new disciples. And he taught them, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The disciples were sent out to show people a better way of living through the example of Jesus, and that way of living is to love one another. 
and this lesson has been passed down to us through the ages, that authentic Christian discipleship means servanthood. We who claim the name of Christian must also claim our calling to serve, that Jesus demonstrated how far we might serve, even to kneeling down and washing the feet of disciples and servants. That call to serve is written on our hearts by God. If we claim the name of Christian, we have been called to serve. John Wesley puts it this way, Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. Friends, listen to your heart for how God is calling you to serve. If your heart desires that you bring health, then teach healthy living, assist family with their diets and exercise, sew cloth face masks. If your heart desires safety and opportunity for children, support children and families, their caregivers, volunteer at schools, build our children's and family ministries. If your heart desires you to feed the hungry, add stock of canned foods to our neighbors in Harmony Pantry, serve meals, support kids' power packs. If your heart desires to share the love of God who sent Jesus to reconcile the whole world, then be creative in sharing God's goodness and grace because the world needs new creative ways to offer the good news of Jesus Christ. Living under social distancing and stay-at-home orders does not make it easy for us to serve in ways we're used to serving. Yet these stay-at-home guidances may be an opportunity for us to examine our lives, our sense of servanthood. Perhaps this is a time to ask yourself what you need to strengthen your disciple journey or where you may be next called to serve. I am praying for myself whether to start at Harmony an eight-month Bible study called Disciple One. I am praying about finding a way to offer Wednesday evening worship and Bible study at a distance. I am praying about ways to identify and meet more of the needs in Marlow and Falling Waters. I am praying about how we might partner in ministry with the Board of Child Care. And I'm also praying that the social distancing does not cause me to lose heart or the stamina or the energy to pursue ways to serve. In the quiet of social distancing, friends, are you taking time to ask yourself, how am I called to serve? And are you asking, what might I do to strengthen my discipleship in Jesus Christ so that I might better show love to others? Well, friends, pray, listen to God's voice in your heart, and prepare for the time when you again can serve as God has called you to serve. Amen. Holy God, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. 
O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to be consoled, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Beloved, be blessed in your prayers, in your fast, in your devotions to Good Friday and to Holy Saturday as you continue this Holy Week observance, preparing your hearts. And hear these words from Matthew. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray.